we continue talking about route choice. There are two distinct but related equilibria, supply-demand equilibrium and a route choice user equilibrium given fixed demand. In the supply-demand equilibrium, we need to ensure that the travel cost on which demand decisions are based equals the outputs of the route choice model for that given demand. For instance, if the travel time is 10 plus demand and the demand is 10 minus the travel time, we want to solve for supply and demand. We talked about the trip distribution model, or the destination choice model. People's choices of destinations depended upon travel time on the network. But the travel time on the network depends on people's choices of which routes to take. We have to solve this whole system iteratively. And you can do this analytically for a two equation, two unknown system by plugging, by plugging in one equation into the other. But if you want to do this for, for many equations with many unknowns, you're going to have to do this iteratively. So that's the first equilibrium that we're looking at, supply and demand. To solve the problem with some algebra, the travel time turns out to be 55 and the demand is 45. The second equilibrium that we're looking at is the user equilibrium in route choice. If you had a given demand, which routes will people take? If there are a thousand people leaving an origin and a thousand going to the destination, how many will take link one and how many will take link two? Well, it depends on the link performance function for link one and link two. We will solve this problem later. What route will a driver choose? We mentioned the term user equilibrium before. We will define it more carefully. John Glenn Wardrop, a transportation analyst from the United Kingdom, posited in 1952 two principles. One that's called the user equilibrium principle, one that's called the system optimal principle. In the user equilibrium principle, he says, each user acts to minimize his or her own cost, subject to every other user doing the same thing. Travel times are equal on all used routes and lower than on any unused route. In other words, each driver takes the shortest path, subject to everybody else taking the shortest path. If there is a path between an origin and destination that takes a longer amount of time than the shortest path, no one uses it. In general, all of the links on a network get some use, but that's because they're serving different origin-destination pairs. For a given origin-destination pair, there is a shortest path, or there might be multiple shortest paths, and then multiple shortest paths will have flows such that they have an equal travel time on them. This is how we estimate route choice and travel demand models. You might notice that this does not guarantee a minimal travel time on the system as a whole. If everybody is behaving in their own best interest, there is no guarantee that the total system travel time will be at a minimum. The system optimal principle says each user acts to minimize the total travel time in the system. In practice, people are selfish. What people choose is efficient for them, but it may not be efficient for the network as a whole. The behavioral assumption is that people are selfish. People are selfish because they cannot possibly know what would minimize the travel time on the network as a whole. What route would you take to reduce everybody else's travel time? There's no way for you to know. In fact, there's no way for the analyst to really know. We can only predict. We can build models of this, but we can't really know because in real time the situation is both dynamic and stochastic. How efficient is the user equilibrium amount choice? We have what we call the price of anarchy which is the ratio of travel time for everybody under the user equilibrium principle to the total travel time in the system optimal situation. Logically, this ratio must be greater than 1. It has been proven mathematically that on a two-link network with linear link performance functions, the price of anarchy is less than 4 thirds, or 1.33. If we had a two-link system, we might be losing 33%, incurring up to 33% higher costs because we're letting people make their own routing decisions. So is 33% an acceptable number? Of course, we live in a much more complicated world than the two-link network. As a research project a couple of years ago, we tested this for the Twin Cities region and looked at the differences in traffic assignment on the network with user equilibrium versus system optimal assignment. Everything else was the same. We just changed the logic under which people were choosing routes. And we did that by taking, using the derivative of link, link performance function, and assigning traffic using that to get what the marginal cost would be. Observe that the SO assignment, the system optimal assignment, has lower flow rates, which are in blue, on freeways, and higher flow rates, which are in red, on arterials, which is intuitive. The short version of the rule is that under user equilibrium, people overuse the freeways and underuse the arterials. We also looked at system-wide performance measures. Total vehicle kilometers traveled, or VKT, in the system. The system optimal situation was somewhat higher because people had to go slightly farther in order to save time because those routes were a little bit faster. But it had fewer vehicle hours of travel, or VHT, 
And that's what people ought to be caring about system-wide, and an average, slightly higher average network speed of 63.2 kilometers per hour versus 61.8. So the same number of trips, the average travel time savings was 1.7%. Now from my perspective, 1.7% increase in travel time associated with selfishness is not actually very bad and suggests that decentralized decision-making gets you very close to the optimal situation. But different cases might have different results. Some have suggested that in a more congested city, this might be worse. Different networks have different results. So it's just a piece of information. How do we go about solving a problem like that? The Minneapolis-St. Paul network has 20,000 links, 3,000 traffic zones. You're not going to solve it analytically using pencil and paper. But we're going to get some style I'm going to do some stylized examples in the next lecture which show you the basic logic that's underlying this process. It's just solved with a lot more complexity. Finally, one of the important factors in traffic assignment is conservation of flow. All cars that enter a link must exit that link. All cars that enter an intersection must exit the intersection. This holds throughout the model except for sources and sinks, the traffic zones themselves. Traffic is generated at a traffic zone and may be attracted to a different traffic zone. So you imagine traffic leaving the centroid of the traffic zone, traveling down a fictitious link called a centroid connector and loading onto the network. That's how traffic enters and exits the system. This is something that helps us solve the model because it gives us basically equations that we can solve, with, solve for. It gives us the extra equations so that we have two equations and two unknowns. One of the equations might be a conservation of flow equation or in the case of original planning model with 20,000 equations and 20,000 unknowns. So we need to think about conservation of flow when solving route choice problems.